Hi everybody, welcome to my talk today which is coordinating nursing care and this is part of a leadership in nursing series. Do check out some of the other videos in this series if you're interested on my free YouTube channel. It's free to subscribe and it is called Support and Career Development for Nurses. So some of the other videos you might be interested in are decision making in nursing, developing leadership skills, delegation and teamwork. So I hope you enjoy the video. Today I'm going to give an overview of coordinating nursing care. I will present some different types, models of integrated healthcare with some key references that are helpful for assignments, for example, and some practical application. And then some tips on how to develop skills to coordinate care. So let's start with the aims of integrated care and the terms integrated and coordinated care are often used interchangeably if you look at papers. But integrated care is when various parts or aspects of care are linked and coordinated together. So it's about aligning, integrating and coordinating healthcare systems and processes to get the best possible outcome for patients or service users or clients, whatever term you want to use. And healthcare usually involves more than one visit to a service and individuals will move between services and providers and be supported by various healthcare staff. And the aim of coordinated care is to prevent fragmented care and to promote a smooth transition between services and this patient centred approach to care where the patient is at the centre. And if you think about your own care, you may have gone to a GP, but have been referred to an outpatient or you might have had to have surgery and then you're discharged into the community for support. So you'll go through several different services and providers potentially. And new models of integrated healthcare are being established to meet those changing healthcare demands because we've got a rising older population and to improve individuals' experiences and access to healthcare and to enhance productivity. That's what these models have been uh, are hoping to achieve. So the impact of poorly coordinated care is um, it will affect the service user's experience, satisfaction will be low, and individuals' preferences or needs might not be met. Um, I have an example where one of my family member has um, a, a wound and it was it started to open and they'd been discharged very quickly from hospital after the operation. And it was a Friday afternoon. So told to go to the GP, the GP secretary said, no, go to the walk-in centre, went to the walk-in centre with this family member and was told, why on earth was you, were you sent here? You should have been sent to um, the local A&E. And I wasn't local to that area. Um, and, and there was this moving from pillar to post and it really affected the the patient at the time, my family members experience. I don't blame anybody, any of the healthcare professionals whatsoever, but the system wasn't set up for, for that sort of communication. And I think a lot of these integrated care pathway models are trying to prevent that and have more of a smooth transition. Um, but the information on discharge also should have been very explicit about what that person should have done if there was a problem with the wound and that wasn't given either. So um, there's financial implications if there is poorly coordinated care. There's more risk of error or adverse events. Repetition um, with appointments. I know people that have been asked to go to an appointment and then the doctor says, well, why have you come again? It's, it's a waste of people's time and the, the person having to go to that appointment increased readmission rates and other serious complications where a person's passed from one service to the next and there isn't that sort of smooth transition. Looking at the nurse's role, um, there isn't that much literature out there relating to coordinated care and integrated care, but Cara Vital in 2021's paper um, was a scoping review looking at nursing care coordination for patients with complex needs in primary health care. And um, nursing care coordination activities were th synthesised in this scoping review into three categories and they um, targeted the patient, family and caregiver, 
health and social care teams and bringing together patients and professionals. And so what's clear is interpersonal communication and information transfer emerged as fundamental supporting activities. So if my family member had been communicated with explicitly stating where they go if there's a complication and the information had gone across services as well. So um, they weren't being told to go from one service to another. Um, that that's it, this would really link to Cara Mattel's work and she really they sorry they highlight Cara Mattel highlight the importance of relational and communication aspects of nursing care coordination which I think is extremely important. So when we're looking at nursing care coordination from an early career nurse perspective or a student nurse or nursing associate you're probably going to be looking firstly at care planning, the nursing process that is coordinating a care plan for a patient with a patient using a person centred approach. McCormick and McCants's paper entitled Development of a Framework for Person Centred Nursing is a very good paper to check out and, and use in assignments. And I've put that at the end as a reference. And person-centred care approaches are seen throughout integrated health models. Um, it's about patient engagement, open communication and shared decision making, and also underpinned by holistic care. You're looking at the whole person meeting their biological, psychological, social, spiritual needs, meeting their preferences. Um, and if you're in the community, you might be looking at case management to ensure coordination of patients care through the assignment of a case manager. And you're going to be having placements in different areas. You might work in different fields, but wherever you work as an early career nurse, try and watch nurse leads and experienced nurses and how they coordinate and manage their caseloads. Education. So you should be educating patient service users and you're enabling them and and also carers, I should say as well. You're trying to enable the individual to be able to self-manage where possible. And you'll see self-management and the promotion of health education and health promotion throughout integrated care pathways. You can also delegate, coordinate care across a team. And so once you've learned how to do your care planning and you've got your one-to-one -one, um, patient nursing person-centred approach. You've also got the um, delegation coordination across a team and your aim is to facilitate that continuity of care across a shift, across settings or providers depending on your level in nursing and whether you're a senior nurse or a junior early career nurse. So you've got this individual type of care coordination with your patient and you've got your um, delegation across a team and you've got your local care coordination, national and global integration and coordination of care. And I'll talk through all of these aspects linked to some references. Globally, we had a coordination of nursing care across the world with the pandemic, looking at sharing evidence and nursing practice, looking at PPE, it was changed according to the evidence and you know, underpinning our care. So looking at integrated healthcare, population health management is being promoted as part of this too. And we have many innovative new programmes targeting difficult to reach populations. And I thought I'd share this one because um, I actually met McCarthy 2020, Fanula, um, at a conference recently. It was an online conference for uh, um, cancer nurses early in their career. And um, she shared her uh, work that she'd um, done in this area. And but Blake Coughlin and Idale in 2015, um, they converted an American style motorhome to provide mobile support to men over Wales affected by prostate or testicular cancer. And that included one to one counselling with a specialist nurse, group support and advice. 
then Finola McCarthy, these references are at the end, similarly wrote a paper on an outreach programme that provided free healthcare checks for men to support early diagnosis of prostate and other urological cancers. And the van visited workplaces, churches, community centres, and it started in Croydon in South London. So these are two examples of some fantastic work going on there that um, really practically show, I think, population health management and a really innovative outreach programmes. So my summary of coordinating nursing care is to, it's to support and enable patients using a person centred approach and to streamline their care activities. There is organising and sharing of information as individuals go between multiple providers to achieve safer and more effective care. And the overall goal is to enable a holistic person centred approach to healthcare whilst reducing costs and improving outcomes through increased efficiency and, and effectiveness of care is very important. And I had a chat to some students the other day and, and many students I talk to do not like the terms finance efficiency. They think nursing shouldn't be about that. The reality is, and, and I agree, you know, there are times when you cannot put a price on certain things in health. However, the reality is that if we overspend in one area, the way the system is set up, someone else will lose out. So we don't want to waste money is what I'm trying to say. And the, the reality is that if we have somebody that's going to three different appointments when we can be much more effective and run clinics that streamline services for patients, it means they have a better experience as well. So the efficiency can link to patient experiences as well, um, as well as the sort of financial implications. So some of you've got some assignments. Um, I think this is a good paper, Lewis et al. It's from the King's Fund and the Nuffield Trust, um, copyright wise, and I've got the reference at the end. And this paper is entitled Where Next for Integrated Care Organisations in the English NHS? And they describe four types of healthcare integration. Organisational, which is about bringing several organisations together, focusing on integrated structures and governance systems. So, for example, using networks and mergers between organisations. Then you've got administrative I can't speak today, administrative <laughs> integration, which joins up non-clinical support and there's the sharing of data information systems. So, for example, electronic patient records. Then you've got service integration, the coordination of different services with the multidisciplinary team. You might have a single point of referral or assessment or signposting services for mental health, for example. And then you've got clinical, which is the coordination of care into a single process within or across professions. So you've got your multi-professional care pathways, your nursing care plans, you've got shared guidelines, protocols and, and these care pathways and benchmarks. So um, hopefully you'll be able to relate something, some of that to your um, assignment. Another good paper from Curry and Ham in 2010 um, entitled Clinical and Service Integration, the Route to Improved Outcomes, described two types of integration, horizontal going across and vertical going up. The reason I do that is because my daughter never remembers what horizontal and vertical is. <laughs> For any of you out there that are the same as my daughter. Um, so horizontal is across um, organisations and organisations at the same stage come to, to, to come together to deliver services. So, for example, mergers of acute hospitals, mergers of social and healthcare organisations at the same sort of type of level. Vertical integration going up, coordination of services among organisations that are at different stages of delivering. And this brings together organisations um, at different levels of a hierarchical structure under one management. So integrating primary, secondary care or general practice and community care. So I would see that vertical integration being enacted through the latest 2022 Health and Care Act, which I'll talk about in a minute. 
and that act has formalised integrated care systems and boards across primary secondary care, for example. So I've also presented some key papers and references that are interesting to this topic area and they also keep you up to date with what's going on in your profession and I would really strongly recommend when you register as a nurse or a, a, a nursing associate to keep an eye on what's going on in your profession, what's going on nationally with the Na National Health Service, health and social care, and because it's going to impact on your profession. Um, if you are interested in some of the policies and over the years, I have a um, YouTube talk on nursing from the 1980s because I worked in a system prior to an internal market and the financial driven market that we have today and to, to now. So if you're interested, do, do check that video out. So some of the key papers and all the references for these are at the end of my talk. So NHS five year forward view 2014 sets out a vision for transforming the NHS and social care in England to become more integrated. The NHS Long Term Plan 2018 details more steps towards that integration. And in England, we are currently putting in place recent legislation to improve integration between different healthcare providers and between health and social care services. And the this has led to the Health and Care Act 2022, which is the biggest reform to the NHS for a decade in, in England, aims to have more joined up partnership working, formalised integrated care systems. And we've got this creation of integrated care boards um, and we're aiming to move away from competitive um, tendering in healthcare. So with the integrated care systems, if you are interested, they are the aim is to bring together NHS organisations, local authorities and other services to plan service delivery collectively. Currently, we've got 42 integrated care systems in England. Um, and they cover different populations. So there's a map of England and you can have a look at how, how these integrated care systems um, cover England. The Health and Care Act has legally awarded integrated care systems statutory power and responsibilities. And then we have integrated care boards and these are statutory bodies responsible for planning and funding most of the NHS services in an area. Looking at the four nations, Scotland is planning similarly to transfer existing integration authorities to these new community health and social care boards, but I don't have the details of, of what the, the plans are. And Northern Ireland and Wales are also planning changes linked to integrating um, and coordinated care. So you can see from the papers I've presented that there is this move to develop more collaborative healthcare partnerships. We're also going to have national streamlined systems, integrated health information technology is taking off globally, which will change the face of contemporary nursing. We will have remote patient monitoring and all of this links to coordination of care. And it might be a topic that you might want to use in your assignments, for example, because it's about trying to streamline, coordinate care. The patient should be at the centre. Um, there's more apps, for example, more ownership of your notes potentially in the future. And there's a big debate about patients having access to their, to their notes. If I go for an appointment now, I'm reminded on my phone, which didn't happen five years ago. So more access to personalised care. And it will be really fascinating to see how that changes when I'm old and grey. Well, I'm grey now, but as I get older and I'm ending up in a hospital somewhere, of what nursing will actually be like. Will I be nursed at home and have all the equipment at home that would be in a hospital? Information technology, though, that's going to be some fantastic work but it needs to be inter interoperable. So the systems need to be able to exchange information. Um, healthcare professionals need to make use of that information. It needs to be easy to access. Um, and we need to be, nurses are the largest users of 
information technology, electronic patient records. So we should be there evaluating equipment and evaluating new systems along with patients who will be having more access of, of that um, of, of, of systems as well in the future. So promoting health and well-being is something that comes out of a lot of papers looking at patient engagement, shared decision making, but population health is about promoting health across populations rather than reacting to illness. So having more outreach community programs and I gave you an example earlier and also the use of genomics and genome sequencing to predict illness is something that will probably come to the fore a lot more over the next few years and people will be at the centre of their own care plans. So how do I develop skills to coordinate care? So when you're looking at your skills to be able to coordinate your nursing care, it's about increasing your self-awareness and knowledge and competence. And you do that through keeping up to date. You've got an evidence base, looking at no local national structures and the different service providers and being aware of who provides what, how you refer for that transition for a patient pathway or any policy changes. The second thing is to have peer feedback, self-reflection and experiential learning so that you're being really well supported and that you're asking for feedback on your practice, which is the best way to learn. And then academic and professional courses to increase your knowledge, skills and competence. And accessing that peer support through clinical supervision and group support is very important. You'll see a thread running through most of the talk, which is holistic understanding of a patient's healthcare needs. And that enables you to care plan, um, it supports patient engagement and shared decision making. And it's important to find experienced role models and to observe others coordinating care when you're early in your career. Looking at your communication skills, collaborative practice and teamwork, and it takes time to develop those competences. How, to, how do teams work? Understanding the roles of each team member and service provider knowing about role boundaries and communication systems, for example, is going to enhance your the coordination and how you coordinate care and essentially listening to patients' perspectives and learning from the patient who should be at the centre of it all. And it takes time to develop your competence and confidence. So use experiential learning to develop those key skills and competences to help you organise and manage your caseloads effectively. And decision making underpins coordinating care, prioritising, delegating, coordinating those caseloads and communicating with and supporting others and um, in the team and team building. So I do have some um, videos that you might find useful, such as decision making, delegating, teamwork, developing leadership skills, which I mentioned earlier. But also the four pillars of advancing practice is an interesting talk and the differences between the support worker roles and a registered nurse is important when you're looking at roles as well and delegation. So hopefully you might find some of those helpful on my YouTube channel. And finally, professional education and academic courses, as I mentioned, is going to help you develop your competence in any field of nursing. So looking at what's out there for post-registration specialist courses, study days, there may be certificate, diploma or postgraduate level courses that will help you at work and masters in healthcare leadership, education or advanced nursing practice. So do link with your educators and see what's appropriate for your role. And then my references, and I'll do these, I know you can stop the video anyway to get these. So all the references are here. I hope you enjoyed my talk. If you're interested in either of my books, the links are in the YouTube description. And if you want to ask me any questions at all, put them in the YouTube um, comments or if you prefer to do it one to one, you can DM me on Twitter, my website or Instagram. And I do hope you found the session helpful.